Australians, particularly those in New South Wales and Queensland, are currently living with a severe reduction of freedoms enforced by the government. At a time when Australians are distracted by the pandemic, distracted by debates around mandatory vaccinations and everyday stresses inflicted by several controversial policies and rising tensions with police, the federal government has used the crisis status of the country as an opportunity to pass through some extremely concerning legislation. The most terrifying of these is the Surveillance Legislation Amendment Bill 2021, referred to as the Identify and Disrupt Bill. And make no mistake, it is a terrifying invasion of your privacy. To investigate this bill further, I'm joined by human rights lawyer, author and Amit University lecturer, Greg Barnes. Greg, thanks for joining me today. Thanks very much for having me, James. Well, Greg, first and foremost, this bill gives what many are calling unchecked powers to the AFP. What exactly do those powers entail? Well, the, these towers, these powers, I should say, entail uh, the capacity of the AFP to essentially take over your computer, to alter or delete data, uh, or put data onto your computer. Uh, they can do so really uh, for very, very uh, minor reasons. Uh, there's a reference to criminal offences, but uh, no greater detail. Uh, they only have to have a reasonable suspicion. They can get a warrant from the Administrative Appeals Tribunal or a magistrate in most cases. And uh, what they can do is, uh, as I say, effectively um, become your online presence. Uh, and that's what's so dangerous about it with, with really no protection. Well, look, they're all very concerning details. From what you're saying there, it doesn't sound like there is a limiting principle. And from what I've seen, the threshold also seems to be exceptionally low, which is a reasonable threat. Is that accurate? Yeah, look, the, the, the threshold is reasonable. Uh, sorry, the threshold is very low. Uh, you know, reasonable suspicion, those sort, reasonable belief, those sorts of phrases uh, are often used in legislation for police to be able to get warrants. Uh, and generally speaking, uh, they do get warrants. There are very few warrants that are knocked back. These, you know, warrants to go into your house is one thing because you go into your house, the police take what they what they think they can get under the warrant, and they leave. This is invading your laptop, uh, your home computer, uh, your phone, um, and in, in, there is capacity under this legislation to be able to do it without having to put affidavit material together, in other words, to justify it to uh, the AAT or a magistrate. Uh, if the uh, police say this is urgent enough, they don't have to provide that information for three days. Really scary stuff. Now, the kind of language we're talking about there is things like offences and suspicion and threats. It's, it's not really language that I would imagine is focusing on serious crimes, at least by the letter of the law it's written, such as terrorism. I mean, offences is now a term that is pretty much associated with public health orders, for example. So should we be concerned about how those terms can be applied? Does that not open a huge can of worms? Oh, you, you should be concerned. And I saw a comment from a colleague, I think, at one of the universities making a similar point this week, and she's right. Um, I think the other point, of course, is that we know from COVID that police do abuse their powers when it comes to surveillance. They have abused the COVID app, which people use. Uh, and we know, for example, that in relation to existing legislation, they have, for example, raided journalists uh, and, and uh, taken materials uh, as they sought to find out the sources in relation to particular stories. Uh, you could just imagine them using it for that very purpose here. But also it's that issue where you might, for example, uh, have a friend who uh, unbeknownst to you is associated with some sort of uh, a group or that the AFP is interested in and you suddenly find your computer being altered and, delete and, and material deleted or alternatively, you know, a surveillance uh, operation of your online presence. Uh, I mean, it's just Orwellian stuff. There are very few protections in Australia. We don't have a Human Rights Act, so there are very few protections against police abuse of this power. Well, Greg, perhaps the biggest area of concern, in addition to the ones we've already raised, is that in order to get this one through, 10 other acts were altered. Now, You've spoken about some of those alterations in the piece that you've written for Michael West Media, which if, for example, we did have a human rights charter, this bill would be in contravention of it. Can you go through a little bit about those 10 other acts that have been altered to, to get this one over the line? So there are a range of um, legislation that's been altered 
uh, for example, privacy legislation, uh, uh, the AFP legislation itself, uh, the criminal code, a range of pieces of legislation have been altered in order to be able to ensure that uh, this power is replicated uh, or evidence can be used uh, when this power is exercised. I think the other point is that this went through the federal parliament in effectively two days. It mm. did go to the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Security Issues, which has been next to useless in recent years, with the exception of Andrew Wilkie. Uh, and it then sailed through with support of the Labor Party. Um, and in fact, uh, it's one of the most remarkable pieces of legislation to hit our parliaments in recent times, and there have been many in relation to this area, uh, but got so little press, which is just quite extraordinary. No, you're 100% right. I mean, I've had to find out this information, for example, from what many would consider alternative sources or fringe sources, so to speak, but it's, it's there. This is not a conspiracy theory. This has been passed through the parliament. This is legislation now in our laws. Can, can we go through a little bit about the history of the bill? Because it's taken a little bit of time to get it actually over the line. So when did this first come about? And you mentioned there that it passed with pretty much unison support. Was there anyone that actually opposed it when it was in front of parliament? Well, certainly the Greens opposed it, as I understand it, and I think Andrew Wilkie opposed it too. And in fact, he gave a speech recently uh, talking about the surveillance state. But the major political parties and the Conservatives in the Senate uh, allowed this bill to go through. I would have thought that the media would have been more on top of this issue, given that they campaigned very, very vigorously when they were raided, for example, News Limited, ABC, and rightly mm. so. Uh, and they should be very concerned about this legislation because their own journalists could find themselves on the end of a warrant here uh, where uh, the, the police decide that they're going to start altering and deleting data. Now, people say, oh, that's far-fetched. None of this is far-fetched. We've seen, and it's ironic we're on the almost anniversary of 9-11, what we've seen since 9-11 is the increasing authoritarianism of our state, the, surveil the rise of the surveillance state, and very few checks and balances. And in fact, if anything, the checks and balances have been eroded. Well, not only that, but I mean, you also look at the current issues, for example, with Jordan Shanks and John Barillaro. Now, simply wanting to do his job, he's been under intense scrutiny from parliaments, from police, uh, raiding all of his files, for example. So we're already at a heightened state here, and now this is just going through, and as you mentioned, there's no one really reporting on it. Let, let's have a look at what the future implications of the bill are. There has been some discussion circulating that it potentially opens the door for something like the creation of a social credit system. Is, is there any truth to that concept given the level of surveillance it allows? Well, look, I think that, you know, that of course is, a, I think, a Chinese uh, approach to these issues, has been said to be a Chinese approach to these issues. Uh, I don't think you should have any doubt, and, and we're seeing it now in the discussion about vaccine passports, if you like, that the, the online presence that people have is going to be taken into account uh, when it comes to their citizenry and uh, uh, where they sit as a citizen and going to be used against them. Uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And that, again, that's not being, that's not fear mongering. That's just the way we're heading. And, and what is extraordinary, as I say, is that there is no pushback on this. Uh, remarkably quiet uh, on the part of the media. Um, and that's what's dangerous because once this legislation and this sort of legislation has become normal of course we've seen it with the post 9 11 anti-terror laws we saw it with legislation which allowed uh, asio to declare operations uh, special operations and therefore commit a f what would otherwise be offenses and and civil wrongs you know we've become bom we've been bombarded with this sort of legislation every government uh, any time they get a request from the afp or asio or asus give them whatever they want. They've got carte blanche. Mm. And um, uh, both sides of politics have been equally guilty. Well, you mentioned that there hasn't been a great deal of coverage in the media itself. There has been a, a bit of pushback, though, from, I think, uh, citizens who have been made aware of what's going on. There's a few petitions circulating at the moment, but I suppose, first and foremost, are they actually going to have any impact? And can this bill actually be repealed? I think the problem uh, now, James, is that the, 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 the horse has bolted. Um, this legislation has gone through the parliament. Uh, it would take a courageous government and neither side of politics has any courage when it comes to these sorts of fundamental rule of law and liberal principles anymore. Um, but, you know, it would take a, a committed government to say we're going to repeal this legislation. Um, uh, but again, it will be up to the courts, I think, to push back. And, you know, if there's one thing we have learnt in the last 
20 years is that particularly the federal court has been prepared to uh, try and trim the wings of, an, of a rampant executive and, and the AFP abusing its powers and it will be left up to the courts. But of course, sadly, the courts can only work with the legislation that they're given. They can't invent the law. Uh, but that's where uh, one hopes there'll be some curtailing of this legislation and at least some form of check on the powers that the AFP will no doubt seek to use. Well, Greg, just before we wrap up, obviously, if it's not repealed, there's got to be some sort of thing that Aussies can do to protect themselves for this invasion of privacy. Is there a way to do that? Would, for example, a, a VPN help to do such a thing? I'm not an expert in technology, but, you know, certainly I, I don't blame people for taking the steps that they take uh, using a VPN, for example. I, I had an email the other day from uh, someone um, and uh, no doubt now the police will be able to issue a warrant and check my emails. But <laughs> I did have an email from someone indicating that uh, they uh, were very concerned about this legislation and they were talking to friends about this legislation and, and how to protect their privacy. And I don't blame them because there are very few rights to privacy enshrined in law in Australia. Uh, and the police know that. And we certainly don't have a human right to privacy like you have, for example, in the UK or in Canada and uh, other jurisdictions. So uh, people have a tendency to push back, and, and rightly so. Look, it's all really quite scary stuff. As you mentioned, Orwellian is probably the word for it, and we're seeing more and more of that. So with any luck, there will be a bit of a pushback. With any luck, we can get people on board with that petition. But, Greg, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Let's hope we can either get it repealed or further amendments are made to protect the privacy of citizens. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you bringing up the issue. Well, that's Greg Barnes, human rights lawyer, author and Amit University lecturer, discussing the Identify and Disrupt Bill exclusively on The Tech Beat.